For those of you that don't know me, my name is David. If you're a first time, I heard we have several first time visitors in the house. Would you give it up for our VIPs? We're so glad that you're here. We got some pizza for you and those of you that brought first timers, we got some pizza for you in just a little bit. You have with you on the seat that you sat down in a copy of the message notes. I hope that you'll stay engaged with me and follow along. Truly believe God's gonna do something tonight. I, um, I was not planning on being on stage this week. Um, we had a, a guest speaker scheduled for tonight that fell through at, at sort of the last minute. And um, I, I do have to admit, although it may sound uh, cliche to some of you or it may sound funny, but uh, when the news came that our guest speaker fell through and that I had to speak, um, I got nervous. Um, and that's not typical of me. Um, I, I did early on in, in my days of communicating God's word get nervous in front of crowds, but I think that that's pretty much gone by God's grace. And um, I, I, I have no shortage of things to say. I always tell our lead pastor, Pastor Gary, I say, you know, if five minutes before the service you got sick or you had to go or something, I could get up there and, and just preach. No notes. I could, I could fill 40 minutes if you need me to, you know. Um, but, but for some reason I got a little nervous, a little uneasy in my spirit. And um, I don't know if it was just uh, my expectations got thrown off or if it was because um, I felt ill prepared or whatever that, that was in me. But um, I took a different approach to my message tonight that I don't typically take. See, the approach that I typically um, give is I, I start with a, a series idea, uh, what's a truth that I want to communicate to everybody and how do I break it down into several weeks and things like that. Um, but uh, this particular message, I, I asked God, I said, God, what do you want to teach me, David? God, what, what do you need to communicate to me right now? as I went digging through God's word, and I said, God, I need you to speak to me. Forget me having to speak to the young people. Forget me having to speak to Amp, but God, speak to me. Do something in me, and, and, and God had to, to do a work in me this week um, and repair some things and heal some things very, very quickly. Um, and the word that God has given me for us tonight is, is a word that I believe he, give, he gave to me for me, um, but because I love you, I hope that the Holy Spirit will do a work through me um, and, and that maybe he might be able to communicate to you in the same way that he communicated to me. And, and over the last 10 years of, of preaching God's word, there's been like maybe one or two messages uh, that I believe sort of stand out in my mind that, that I can kind of point back to that people uh, in my life that I talk to can often point back to and say, you know, it was a year ago or it was 18 months ago or whatever, but on that night, I remember God did something. And I'm believing and expecting and have been praying for that, that this night would be one of those nights. I believe that tonight, somebody's life is going to be completely transformed. I believe that there are even some of you that have been following Jesus for some time, but have been limping through life in Christianity, and I believe tonight God's going to do a supernatural work, um, and this is going to be a night that forever you might look back on and say, man, I don't really remember many of the details, but I remember that January 9th, 2019, God showed up and did something, and I've been believing that, and so we're going to get into God's word together. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If not, that's on your message notes. It'll also be up here on the screen. It says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. This is Paul speaking. He says, but we, believers, have this treasure in jars of clay. How many of my 25 and older has ever heard of jars of clay, the band? Anybody? Yeah? Not enough of you. Dude, seriously, like, they were awesome, man. They are awesome. Go YouTube, Jars of Clay. That's beside the point. Jars of Clay to show that the surpassing power, let's look at this, that the surpassing power belongs to God and not us. Let me read that again. But we have this treasure in Jars of Clay to show that the surpassing power, the true power, belongs to God and not to us. This is simply to mean that God is strong, that God is able, that that God is in control. You know what's true about jars of clay? They're fragile, right? Uh, if you can imagine a, just a, a simple mason jar, mason jar, it's fragile, it's easily broken. And, and the truth of humanity, the truth about humanity all that we all share, that we all have in common is that we're all very fragile. Not only physically, but emotionally and spiritually and mentally, we are 
fragile. In our flesh, we are weak. In, in times of, of turmoil and trial, uh, and even in, in times of confusion, we're often vulnerable and we're very, very weak. And what Paul is trying to remind us first and foremost is that although we are weak, our strength is found in God because God is strong. Right? God is not like us. God is strong. When we are unable, God is able. When we are confused, God is not. When we are out of control, God is in control. Is anybody alive tonight? Don't make me preach at you, okay? I don't want to preach at you tonight, but I will if I have to. What, I, what Paul is trying to, he's starting his whole point here, and it's so important to understand where we're headed tonight, that, that in the moments where we are broken, we know that God is not broken. And see, I fail to realize this sometimes because sometimes I feel like my brokenness means that God messed up or that God didn't show up or that, that God didn't do his job. Now, it's hard to even admit that, but, but something in my flesh believes that. But what Paul is saying is what we have to remember is that the brokenness in this world is because of us, not because of God. And when we are weak, we have someone who we can turn to who is not weak. But so often as believers, we, we lie to ourselves. We lie to everybody else. We put on this front like we're strong. Like we got it all together. Like, like that we're unbreakable emotionally. Like we're not bothered by people relationally. So often we put out this front like we're stronger than we actually are because God forbid anybody ever see us suffer. God forbid anybody ever know that we're hurt. God forbid anybody ever know that we're wrestling or struggling or we're offended. We don't ever want anybody to know that, but it's in those moments we must realize that we are easily broken, but God is not. And so tonight, maybe you're relying on your own strength and your own ability to make it through certain things. And, and listen, as your big brother in Christ, let me tell you, you try to depend on your own strength and you'll watch yourself fail yourself over and over. You think you're, you keep telling yourself you're strong enough. You keep telling yourself you're awesome enough. You keep telling yourself that you can handle it. And I promise you, life's gonna throw you things that you cannot handle. The more I've gone into this thing called life, the, the older I have gotten, I have realized more and more how weak I actually am. Because life tends to throw things at me and remind me of how breakable and easily broken I am. But what it also does is reminds me how faithful and how strong and how able my God is. And what I'm asking you to do tonight is to focus your minds not on your own ability or strength, but on God's. And this is what Paul says, that the surpassing power belongs to God. But let's look at verse 8. This is so key for where we're going tonight. We are afflicted, he says, in every way. If you're taking notes, if you're circling, highlighting, underlining, whatever, if you have a Bible, go home and find this passage and circle, underline, star, highlight that word, but. It's huge. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, or another translation will say confused, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, verse 9, that's a big word. Very few, if any of us in this room, have experienced the kind of persecution that Paul is referring to. But all of us can at least on a surface level identify with what it's like to be persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. The first blank there in your notes is the first thing, the first key that we have to realize tonight together. I want you to write it down and then tell your neighbor next to you or tell your neighbor next to you and then write it down and say, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Could have been worse. Paul says, I know what I'm going through and I know it's difficult and I know it's hard, but it could have been worse. And here, here's what I want to say quickly. I think a lot of times Christians get in a really bad habit of comparing their struggle or their hardships with other people's struggles and hardships. So what happens is they'll go, I'm hurting, I'm struggling, um, but, but I, 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 I know that other people have it worse than me. And, and here's what I want. I want you to be free from that. 
Uh, don't do that to yourself. Okay, don't minimize your struggle simply because others are struggling. So often we look to other people's struggle and we think it's worse and we compare ourselves to other people's struggle and we downplay or try to ignore what we're going through as though other people experiencing hardship negates the fact that you're struggling. That, that, that's not true. Just because other people are experiencing hardship doesn't mean that you're not experiencing hardship. But here's what I, I want to say. Comparing yourself to others is a dangerous game. It's a dangerous game. Paul's not talking about comparing your struggle to somebody else's struggle. What he's talking about is comparing your struggle to what could have been. It, what he's talking about is look at your struggle and realize that your struggle could have been a lot worse. That had God not intervened, that had God not shown up at the right time, at the time that only he could have known to show up, it could have been a lot worse. This helps me in my life and my walk with God to remember that no matter what I'm walking through, it could have been worse. Paul says, I know my situation was difficult. I know it wasn't pleasant, but, but, I am going to praise God because I know how bad it could have been. Yes, I was perplexed, but I was not driven to despair. Yes, I was persecuted, but I was not forsaken. I want you to write this down. I want this to, to sink in in your soul. It'll be up here on the screen. I want you to hear this. I want this to marinate in our souls. I want you to know this. Sometimes I want to worship when I think about what wasn't. I want, you, I want, that, I want that to seek in. Sometimes I, 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 I go through hardship, I go through struggle, and when I think about not just what happened, but what didn't happen, not when I just think about what is happening, but when I think about what didn't happen, when I, not when I think about what is, but when I think about what wasn't, it moves me to worship. It moves me to want to worship God because even though I'm experiencing pain and trouble and hardship, even though I might be suffering in this moment, when I think about what could have been, it makes me want to praise God. Here's what I mean. Maybe you have been abandoned by your family, but you have not been abandoned by your God. You have not been abandoned by your God. And so... So maybe, maybe you've been abandoned by someone. But when you think about the fact that you've not been abandoned by your God, it should make you want to worship. When I think about what didn't happen, not just what's going on, but what didn't happen. Paul says, I may have been afflicted, but I wasn't crushed, and so I'm going to praise God. I was perplexed, I was confused, but I am not in despair. And so, bless the Lord, oh my soul. I, I, I may have been persecuted, but I was not abandoned, but I was not forsaken. And so I will praise the forever faithful God. I may have been struck down, but I was not destroyed. And so all that is within me will bring God praise. I will worship when I think about what wasn't. I know it sucked, but it could have been a lot worse. I know it was terrible, but, I, but, but we got to remember, but you may feel like your family doesn't love you, but you got a family around you right now that does. You got an amp leader that does. You got friends in your group that do. You got a student pastor who loves you. You may feel like you have no friends, but the Bible says that we have a friend named Jesus who sticks closer than a brother. You may feel like you've gone through a faith crisis, but look at you now, sitting in church, praising God. Because everything that the enemy had to throw at you, it obviously didn't work. Because here you are praising God. Here you are worshiping God. Here you are lifting your hands. Here you are listening to the word of God. And you're hearing from God's spirit, even though everything that the enemy had, he threw at you. But... But look where you are. Look where you're sitting right now. And all things in the universe, all things have been ordained for you to be here right now. And it will rescue you from a faith crisis when you are able to focus your attention not just on what is going on, but what didn't go on. And when you realize that a lot of things could have happened and they didn't happen, it moves you into worship. 
Not comparing your situation to other people's situation, but comparing your situation to what could have been. Yeah, my car broke down, but. Yeah, they probably exclude me, but. Yeah, I do have to go to school tomorrow, and that sucks. But there's always, there's always something beyond your struggle that could have been. And so when you think, when, when you focus too much on what is going on, and you don't take a moment to at least consider that what went on was not the end of the story, nor was it the fullest extent of what could have happened had not God's grace intervened, then you will never, ever understand the purpose behind your pain. You won't. Again, don't compare yourselves to others, but compare your situation to what could have been. Yeah, you're trying to take me out, devil, but you can't because I belong to Jesus. Yeah, you're trying to convince me that I'm nothing, but, but I know that's not true. I, I know that even though I may be nothing, I know God is everything. There's always something beyond it. When I think about what wasn't, not just about what is, but what wasn't, it makes me want to worship. Look at verse 10. Oh, if it could get better, it's going to. Here we go. Be with me, Lord Jesus. Look at what he says. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus. Watch this. So that. Underline it, circle it. Always carrying around in the body the death of Jesus. So that, so that, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. That second fill in there in your notes. We must find the why. We must find the why. Not just what am I going through, but why am I going through it? If you don't understand the why, then your misery will be meaningless. But I'm here to tell you that your misery is not meaningless. Some of you dragged yourself into this place miserable. And I would be lying if I said I walked into this place okay. Because I've been in that place where I walk in miserable. But I'll tell you that I stay in my misery longer when I fail to realize why I'm miserable. And you will always be miserable and beyond that, you will never be able to understand the purpose behind your pain or the meaning behind your misery until you understand why. Here's what Paul says, verse 10. We always carry around the death of Jesus. And he says, so that, so that. Turn to your neighbor, say, so that. So that. Listen, listen. We must learn to connect the so that's. We must learn to connect the so that's. See, the so that's are what give us purpose behind our pain. It's what gives us significance to our suffering. Paul says, I know I'm going through this, but I'm not going through this for no reason. I'm going through this so that. And he, tells, he says, I know I'm suffering, but it's not pointless. I'm suffering so that. Paul's specific circumstance was that he was suffering so that Jesus would be glorified. He says, I'm always carrying around with me and in my heart the death of Jesus Christ so that Jesus Christ will be glorified in all that I do. Until you understand the so that's, you will always walk from miserable situation to painful experience and you will never understand why and you will never properly hear Heal, and you will never walk in the true freedom and joy that God has set before you in Christ until you understand your so that's. Until you understand why you went through it. Like maybe someone gets sick so that they can minister to the nurses in the hospital. Right? Like maybe God let your car break down so that he could make room for a new one. 
maybe God had to let you get fired from your job so that he could open a better opportunity for you that you couldn't see. When you don't understand your so that, you think that everything you go through is meaningless and purposeless, and you'll always be wondering why, and you'll always be confused until you can connect your so that. Maybe, maybe, maybe you were abused as a child. And you can't think of any reason why you had to suffer. And to this day, you walk around shackled to your past, thinking that all of your identity is wrapped up in what happened to you. But maybe tonight you need to realize that what happened to you as a child had a so that. So maybe you were abused so that God could rescue you from that abuse and so that your testimony of God's faithfulness will help reach millions of people with the gospel. Maybe, maybe you were abandoned. Maybe you were literally abandoned by your family. And you think, how could they? Why would they? Why did that? Uh, how come? And you're not looking at the bigger picture. Maybe you were abandoned so that you would be moved to worship when you think about the faithfulness of your God who never abandons you. Maybe you were betrayed by someone, but maybe tonight you need to realize that you were betrayed so that you could realize that God will never betray and he will never let down. But until you find your so that, you will walk around in misery, never understanding the purpose behind your pain. And here's what we know and believe tonight. Here's why we gather. It's because Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth, proclaiming himself to be God and have the ability to forgive sins. And at the end of his earthly life, Jesus was hung up on a cross in the place of sinners. The most, the greatest man in the world who was God in the flesh had the most horrific evil happen to him because it should have happened to us when he hung on the cross. But why did Jesus die? So that you could have a relationship with God. Why did Jesus die? So that you could be forgiven. Why did Jesus die? So that you could be healed. Why did Jesus die? So that we could be reconciled to our creator. When we remember the so that, it gives the purpose to the pain. It helps us realize that I'm not alone in this. Come on, somebody. You're about that close to making me preach to you right now. So that. I don't know, I don't know why what's happened to you has happened to you. But here's what I do know. That what has happened to you does not mean that God is not good. It doesn't mean that God is not there for you. It doesn't mean that God has forgotten you. It doesn't mean that God has forsaken you. But it might be that God is trying to do something in you. See, so often when we walk through difficult situations, when we don't think about the purpose behind it, and we just look at the details, we look at the what and not the why, then we end up not ever dealing with pain, but just moving from painful situation to painful situation. And then what happens sometimes is we bring our past back into our present because we never actually dealt with anything. Because we never understand the so that. So if you ask yourself anything tonight, no matter, I don't care what you're going through. I mean, I do care what you're going through, but what you're going through is irrelevant. Why? What's God trying to do? Are you paying attention to God who is still there? Or have you taken your eyes off of God and put them onto your circumstance? If you've done that, you're focusing on the what, but not the why. And my, my heart breaks for those of us that will walk through this building tonight in the same broken place that we were when we came in. But we can leave tonight knowing I'm going through this so that. My parents got a divorce so that. My friends said they didn't want to be my friends anymore so that. I failed at school so that. I was born to the parents I was born to so that. I go to the school that I go to so that. I'm here tonight right now in this moment so that. And I can't answer that for you. But until you answer that question... Let this wash over you. I know if I go through it, I'll grow through it. Did you catch that? This is the place we have to get to as the people of God. To say, I know that if I go through it, I'm going to grow through it. That I'm not going to go through it for no reason, but as I go through it, 
I'm going to grow through it. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to be humble through it to know again that I am weak and God is strong. I'm not going to try to mask it, but I'm going to look at the bigger picture and realize that I might have went through it, but I'm still here. And I went through it, but there's a purpose behind it. It was so that I know if I go through it, I'm going to grow through it. And more importantly, God will be glorified because of it. But Pastor David, how was God glorified through what I went through as a child? Look, you let God sort that out. Here's what I can tell you. No matter what you've experienced, and I know some of you have dark pasts. I'm not trying to trivialize that or make light of it. But I tell you, you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Become an adopted son or daughter of Jesus the King. You spend eternity with him. Five milliseconds into eternity staring Jesus in the face, you'll forget all about it. Because what you go through now not only has a purpose that God is moving you from one place to another, but God has glorified himself in that situation and you will realize it one day and one day when eternity begins for you, you will stand face to face and still glory in the face, King Jesus, and you'll worship him and magnify him, not just for what he's done, but for who he is. And things will start to fall into perspective. If I go through it, I know I'm going to grow through it. And I know God will be glorified in it. Verse 16. There on your notes, I have a typo. I apologize. Verse 16. So we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Do you catch what he's saying? He's saying my flesh keeps taking shots, but my spirit's getting stronger. You catch what he's saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know they did something to you, but what they did to you cannot be compared to what God is doing in you. I feel like y'all, like what they're doing to me does not compare to what God is doing in me because my flesh may be under attack, but my spirit is under grace. And I am experiencing right now the goodness and favor and mercy of God, no matter what they do. That even though my outer self is wasting away, my inner self is being renewed and strengthened day by day. Look at verse 17. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us. Look at this. If you want to know the purpose, it's preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Beyond all comparison. So we fix our eyes. Or we focus. <laughs> we focus. Not on what is seen. I know it's happening. I know. I know. I know it's tough. I, I didn't say that. I know it sucks. I know you've shed tears over it. But we're going to fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. But I can't see God working in this, but I know he is. So we're going to fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This third filling in your notes. We follow our focus. We follow our focus. What you tend to focus on is what you tend to follow. What you look at seems to, seems to be what you move to. What are you focused on tonight? What, what's got the center of your attention tonight? Is it what you went through today? Is it what you went through yesterday? Is it what you went through a year ago that you won't let go of? What's the focus of your heart tonight? What's the focus of your life? What's the focus of your mind? What's that thing right there that you, you can't help but focus on? And it's like the more you tell yourself to forget it, the more it seems to come up. And the more you tell yourself to let it go, the more you seem to not be able to in your flesh. The, the more that you tell yourself to not let it bother you, the more it does. What's that thing? What, what are you focusing on? Was it something that happened to you or was it something that didn't happen that you thought should have? What is that thing? 
Because here's what happens. We tend to follow what we focus on. So what happens is we put our focus in the wrong place and then we end up in the wrong place and wonder how we got there. We put our focus on the wrong things then we end up giving our heart to those things and wonder why those things have our heart. I don't like to do this very often. Uh, mostly because I don't want to be considered old. I'll be straight. But can I talk to you like a dad? Because I'd much rather you compare me to like your older brother. <laughs> but I feel like in this moment, some of you need a father. So if you would for a moment allow me to speak to you like a father would speak to his children. What some of you are going through tonight and what some of you have been through recently is either going to ruin you and completely set the pace for the rest of your life or it will be a tool that you allow God to use to strengthen you and to move you from one place to another. And tonight, if you, do, if you fail to ask yourself this question, the why question, the so that question, you're going to walk out just as broken as you came in. That's okay. Let God do his work. You focus on the what. You'll always be confused. You'll always be angry. You'll always be upset. You'll always be frustrated. And when you focus too much on the what, you'll look for other what's in order to satisfy you. But when you look to the why, you know that he, Jesus, has already satisfied you. And the thing that has happened to you was not meant to ruin you, but meant to bring you from one place to another to help you grow into a new season of your life. And I can tell you this. When I look my little girl into the face, who doesn't understand what's happening, my promise remains the same. I'm dad. I love you. I will not leave you. I'm always here for you. And I believe the Father, heart of God, is looking into this place tonight to tell somebody here today that what is going on in your life does not mean he's not there, does not mean he doesn't love you, does not mean that he is not for you, and it, and, and it doesn't mean that he'll ever leave you because he won't. Don't walk out of this place broken if you drag yourself into this place broken. We're going to fix our focus tonight. We're going to fix our focus, and we're going to turn our focus from what has happened to who Jesus is. Look at this verse. Many of you are familiar with it. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Look at what it says. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world. <laughs> but, every time you see it in your Bible, you underline it, you circle it. Don't be conformed. But, what's better? Be transformed. You're going to let the situation change you? Or are you going to change the way you think about your situation? Are you going to let it affect you? Or are you going to not let it affect you? Not because it didn't hurt, but because you're going to change the way you look at it. You're going to, you're going to focus on the right things. Look at this. But be transformed by the renewal of your mind. By the renewal of your mind mind. You being tortured in your mind tonight? Because this week I've been tortured in my mind. I don't know about you, but not even really this week, this month, this past year, this past 10, 11 years of walking with God. My mind. See, one moment I'm angry, and then the next moment I'm content, and then the next moment I'm emotional, and then the next moment I'm sad, and then the next moment I'm confused, and then the, I... But see, in those times, I'm looking at the wrong stuff. I'm focused on the wrong thing. But when I fix my focus and I, I, I realize that I will ultimately follow my focus, I realize that I know this sucks, but, but God is still good. He is still faithful. He will see me through. And I know that what I'm going through is so that. And I don't know what the specific is, but I do know ultimately I'm going through what I'm going through so that my Jesus will be glorified. The song that we're going to sing, the band's going to come up and join me if they will. This song that we're going to sing together. The reason I've asked that the band would sing this song and that I would hope that you would enter into this with us is because the first line of the song says, I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. 
So I don't know what has ruled in your heart and in your mind today. But even for a moment, we're going we're gonna to shift our focus. We're going to change our focus. We're going to fix our focus. And we're going to put our minds onto Jesus. We're going to cast our minds to the cross. Because we know at the cross is where Jesus suffered and died, not just for us, but instead of us. Not just for me, but as though he were me. For my sins, for my shame. And he suffered and he died so that I would be healed, so that I would be forgiven, so that I could be made new, so that I could be adopted by God. Him as my father, me as his child. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. The song will say, oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Praise his name forevermore. Would you pray with me? Jesus, even if it's just for this moment, let us change our focus. Get our eyes off of the circumstance. Get our eyes off of the suffering. Get our eyes off of the what put them not just on the why, because maybe for some of us, we can't figure out the why in this moment. Maybe your Holy Spirit won't be able, maybe, maybe we won't allow your Holy Spirit to be able to, to connect the so that's for us tonight, but we know tonight as a people that ultimately what we are going through is so that you might be glorified. So Jesus, just for a moment, would you be king over our hearts and king over our minds and cast our, our minds to the cross and let us praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and all God's people said, amen. amen. Would you stand with us?